So here's a question. In the advent of a global conflict, and you could even say in the advent of any conflict, where is God? Who is God working for? Whose side is God on? When we have a conflict looming like Russia and uh, the West, and I suppose, you know, it's going to involve China as well, because China is a Russian ally. And so if all uh, the Western countries are ganging up on Russia, then Russia is going to have a few allies as well. Uh, whose side God going to be on? If God loves all his children, then surely he doesn't favour any outcome. Maybe he favours the outcome with the least bloodshed. So does he favour the victors, the most powerful? Let's say America and Europe have got the most warheads and they can bring more carnage to Russia. Then is God on America's and the West side? How does God justify that? by saving lives that would have been lost in a greater conflict where do we draw the rational line on this people and it is said in the bible that satan is lord over the world so god's got no impetus he is in actual fact impotent so what sort of a god's that Wow, an impotent God. Well, that's a paradox, isn't it? That's just a stupid contradiction. So, is there a God or isn't there a God? Oh yes, there's a God, but um, he's given us free will. And, oh, by the way, to, to um, add a little bit of spice, he, uh, he gave the devil jurisdiction over the earth forever. Okay, so the devil's got jurisdiction over the earth and he gave us free will uh, to choose. But how many of us are choosing war? How many of us are wars being forced upon us? And so, where is our free will? I'm pretty sure that um, all of you who are not soldiers, because they love a bit of bloodshed, they love to think they're going to be a hero, um, but everybody else, I'm pretty sure that they'll all be voting not to have a war. And so, um, if there's 99% voting not to have a war, then where does our free will come into it? If, if the war still goes ahead. So free will of millions accounts for nothing. When you've got a few people in positions of power, which just give orders to idiots, complete fucking drones, who have family and kids, and belong to societies and have friends and associates and all that and they're just going to go to war what are they thinking? that they're invincible and when they come back everything's going to be the same? are they wondering who's going to be marrying their partner when they don't come back? maybe it's that cunt over the road who you hate but you know your, your missus got a bit of an eye for Maybe it's him. Wouldn't that be a fucker? You go to fight for your country, you go to fight for the world, you die and then your missus end up shacking with that heinous cunt over the road. Who you always knew that your missus had a thing for, but she'd always deny it. Where is God? So rationally, if there was a God, there wouldn't be wars, right? sense of reason doesn't it if you love your children you don't send them off to war parents if you love your children you're going to do everything in your power to stop your sons and daughters going off to fight in these stupid fucking wars but if you don't love your children if you are evil then you'll send them and you'll tell them how great they are and how proud you are 
And then when they die, he'll say, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of her. And then you'll pretend to cry at the grave. If you love your children, you don't send them to war, do you? You just don't. The only way you're ever going to consent to your loved ones going to war is if it's absolutely unavoidable. If the, uh, the troops are on your beaches now, or they're in the air, or whatever they're doing, it's imminent, then you're going to go, fuck it. We, we, we're bound. We've got to protect ourselves. So then you do it. But who sends their sons and daughters? Who congratulates their sons and daughters when they enlist into these killing machines, which are just subsidiaries of huge corporations? What retards do that? Fucking retards. Deadheads. Obviously. Um, and so, is there really any loss? I mean, these the non-spirited NPCs, aren't they? So is there any loss? The loss is the spirited ones that get wrapped up in the middle. Maybe there's a, a baby in the arms of a non-spirited parent and they get blown up. That's a shame. That's a tragedy. That was a spirited human being. They came to have an experience here which could have done great things. But was took out the game much earlier than was reckoned with. So we can feel compassion and empathy for those who really don't want war. They are light beings and they would try to do everything they could in their power to prevent war. But there's too much of a momentum from the drones. And if all your family are drones and they're all pushing for war, they'll start to gang up on you. They'll start to chastise you and ostracise you, won't they? What do you do? You see, when we get philosophical and we pose these questions, none of it makes any sense. None of it makes any sense at all. And because it doesn't make any sense, we have then start to consider the absolute miraculous that aliens are, you know, somehow invisible here and they are manipulating all these politicians and they're making deals with them and they all know about it but then none of them's blowing the whistles and none of them's coming clean and none of them's changing their mind or anything like this it's all going on very very smoothly and this is what people say well if there were aliens somebody would have blown the whistle by now somebody would have fucking banged it over fucking some sort of news uh, outlet um, you know, and th there must be lots of occasion to do this. Why hasn't it happened? But then you see, because we're so perplexed with the nature of the human being, we, we can't reckon with the evil that we do, so we invent devils. We hope and pray that there's a better world somewhere, so we invent gods. Then, when we don't want to reckon with our own shadows, we don't want to look into our own heart for our own evil. We blame it on the devil, we blame it on the politicians, we blame it on archons, we blame it on the Illuminati, we blame it on the nefarious cabals and all these sort of things. And, you know, we, we, we say that they, they work with shape-shifting the invisible aliens and they drink you know children's blood and uh, the politicians they're all drinking the blood as well and all these sort of things we do we invent those things because we we simply can't can't confront ourselves we simply won't accept our own evil when we look at what's going on and we are the ones that are responsible for voting in these people who do these things, who carry out the orders. Well, we are every single bit to blame, aren't we? And yet we deny our blame. We go to them. It wasn't me. I only voted them in. I didn't want them to do No, you voted for war. You voted for war, you dumb fuck. 
when we look at uh, the amount of Americans that are going to be voting for that imbecile, that geriatric, is it geriatric? Geriatric. Geriatric. When we look at the amount of Americans that are going to be voting for that, We have to, we have to know that at least fifty percent of America are absolutely dumb as fuck. If they cannot will a more able-bodied person to lead their nation, they are fucking sick beyond measure. What sort of hypnosis are they under? What sort of a cunt is going to be looking at Joe Biden and think, he's good for another four years. Yes, he's a strong man. He's a good man. He's a man of integrity. Yes, he's done very, very powerful and useful things in the last four years. Just a retarded old senile geriatric. And yet, half of America is going to be voting him in. Do they have a death wish? Obviously. So I look at the facts and I go, well good, I'm happy for you. You've made the right choice. Because you are all fucking retards, then you deserve to get wiped out in a nuclear holocaust. And I hope it comes very swiftly. Um, but I do hope there's an enormous amount of pain and suffering uh, with it before you die individually all of those that voted for Biden um, yes I, I do hope that you have plenty of time for reflection on your own stupidity and on your own evil how can we come to any other conclusions people I mean some people may think you know I'm thinking in a peculiar way I'm certainly thinking in a way that most people don't think, that's for sure. Otherwise you'd be hearing a whole lot more of it. You, you know, we, we can hear people going, you know, taking the piss out of the Biden. Or, you know, they give these little clips here and there, and it's just been going on forever, throughout his whole inauguration. Uh, he starts to say something, and then he's probably shit and pissed himself at the same time. And then he has to get ushered off the stage, he, doesn't, he can't even find the fucking door or the stairs. And yet, people are watching that and thinking, I'm going to vote for Biden. You know, okay, if you don't like Trump, if you don't think Trump's good for the country, then uh, there's a very, very good man, Bobby Kennedy. Listen to how he speaks, listen to his policies, listen to what he wants for America. Who? could have a fault with that. He's very clever, very articulate, uh, very versed in all uh, arenas of politics, and he knew exactly what was going on in this last bullshit scam, and uh, he knows what's going on today. And yet, he's so low down in the ratings. Why is that? Because America's full of dumb fucks. Why would anybody vote Trump in? Because Trump's going to drain the swamp. Well, he didn't even come close the first time around, did he? What did he do? He pushed Kobe the same as everybody else. You know, for some people, Trump may be appealing. Because he's really a racist and a classist. Um... And he wants everything for America. And he doesn't give a fuck about the rest of the world. And this is why he rounded up all of these uh, illegal immigrants. And, um, you know, put the children into cruel conditions for months and months and months whilst waiting transit. And he arrested all the men in the middle of the night. And, uh, you know, just deported them without the children. Never got to see the children. Never got to know what's happening with the children. And all these sorts of things. Eventually, uh, what he was doing was overruled. On compassionate reasons. But that's Trump for you. He's just doing what he wants America to be. 
He wants it to be very elitist. He wants to give uh, untold, untethered powers to the police and the armed forces. And he wants to bring the death sentence back for uh, anybody that deals in drugs. Anybody. Where does that end? You know, if you're dealing a few magic mushrooms, is, is, does that constitute a death penalty? If you're dealing in marijuana, does that? You know, granted, there's a massive pandemic which is killing millions of people in America with fentanyl. Anybody who deals with fentanyl, yeah, threaten them with a death penalty because fentanyl's a killer. And I've been privy to listening to lots of people who had people dying of fentanyl before their very eyes. I know the extent of that plague that's come over America. I know that whole families, mothers, fathers, aunties, uncles, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters in the same family are all addicted. I'm like, how on earth does that happen? But I'm told it does, and I've listened to plenty of stories. So, you know, Christians, or anybody that's got a little bit of a belief in, you know, God and Satan, who's who? That's the question I'm asking. Who's who? And where can we see one over and above the other? Because if we are led to believe that um, Satan has jurisdiction over the whole world, then everything that's evil pertains to Satan. But then that just makes a laughing stock and a mockery of God. And we have to look at the concept of God as being a being that's all omnipotent, omniscient, and all pervasive, and all this sort of thing. Uh, well, that don't sound right then. It can't be right. What's God done? Just gone on holiday forever and left the world to evil. Well, that just sounds like sickness to me. God must be sick. He must be sick. 2,000 years he's been gone and left the world to evil because we don't beg and bow down every second of our lives. He's a heinous motherfucker. Really. So then you could say, well, you know, you see, the Archons speak about uh, Yahweh being the Demiurge. Some sort of descendancy from the Anunnaki. Uh, just a, a little god, a Demiurge. Um... And even the Bible, it says that um, uh, God didn't want Adam and Eve to eat from the forbidden uh, tree of fruit because then they would become like us, us people. And so, if you read the story of the Anunnaki, uh, then you'll see that there's lots of powerful entities, apparently, that made manifest and lorded it over the world for thousands of years here and there and uh, so I would think that you see having read the Old Testament you know from front to back twice but many many times um, selectively referring back to certain books I never ever saw a single act of benevolence in that book. I only saw evil. And then when we listen to the interpretations, it's like I'm speaking about the Passover in the last video. You go on Google and you look for what that Passover means and they'll tell you, oh, it means this and it means that and it means something and the other. But they won't ever tell you, well, fundamentally, it meant death to all the firstborn of the Arabs, of the Egyptians. They skirt over that. They wash over that. And they just say, oh, well, it's just about uh, being emancipated and being free from slavery and this and the other. And then when you look at how the um, Israelites got into slavery, they all went of their own accord into Egypt. And then it is said that they ended up being rounded up and put into slavery. Well, that's exactly the same story um, what every other country uh, will tell, save for putting them into slavery. But th what every other country states is that they rounded them all up and they told them to fuck off. Get the fuck out of our country, you parasitical fucks.
because there have been a scourge on the planet ever since they were in existence. And if you look into history, you see every single country that they infiltrated, they did the same parasitical stuff. They are parasites through and through, and this is why Adolf wanted to round them all up and eradicate them. Everybody else did it before. And um, so you look at the denial, you look at them celebrating that, but never being honest what they're celebrating. They are celebrating the death of all the Egyptians first born. And they are eating the proceeds of their sacrificial lambs and they're enjoying their unleavened bread and they celebrate it every single year. Is it any wonder the Arabs hate them with a vengeance? Where is God? What sort of a God would say, because you Egyptians don't bow down to me, then I'm killing all your first babies and I'm sending all different sorts of plagues and shit on you to kill you know everybody else as well seven plagues how many people would have been killed in these plagues if they ever existed um, just because this idiot Yahweh wasn't being bowed down to and worshipped they thought fuck you you're an evil demiurge I'm bowing down worshipping you you sick fucking inadequate cunt Hmm. Find reason to argue against it. Any of you Christians, you come on and find reason to argue against what I'm saying. I'm just stating what says clear as day in that book. What happened? How do we justify that? How do we say that that's a good thing? How do we say that just to murder people's firstborn is the most cruelest and heinous thing you could ever do, isn't it? You take away people's firstborn. There's nothing more evil than, than that on the whole fucking planet. Nothing more evil in the fucking cosmos, I shouldn't wonder. And yet Yahweh instructed that. I personally don't have any time for that at all. And I absolutely condemn everybody that follows that heinous fucking evil heinous evil and then when you look at the evil which was perpetrated in the Old Testament and then how they try to uh, uh, no 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 look over there look over there look at that evil look at that um, Satan bloke uh, he's the one that's evil uh, oh he's t he, he's gonna make you do evil you know he's gonna say all different sorts of evil oh he's gonna get in your head and make you do evil yeah and they say well didn't you do evil yeah well, well don't look at me no 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 look at me I'm all good I'm all loving I love you I love you look into my eyes I love you I never did any evil he's the one that he made me do it he made me do it um, uh, well, you said you're the powerful one. Yeah, but uh, he's more powerful than me over the world now. Uh, 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 and all this, it just gets ridiculous. It makes a shocking mockery of the human being. It makes a shocking mockery of intelligence. And so I, I just go get rid of them. They're worth nothing. They're worth nothing because all these people are worshipping evil. They're all following Yahweh or Jehovah. That is, is evil. They are worshiping evil. But you know, some clever fuck has turned it all ass about face, and they project onto somebody else. And that somebody else was the good guy. They just said, if you eat from that fruit, you'll know what their game is. And some of us now know what their game is. Thank you, Satan. I'm very happy that you told me about the his fucking game. Now I know what the game is, and I can see what the game is. But look around at all these stupid cunts. They just haven't got a clue. Why couldn't you reach them? Well, because, um, you know, Jehovah or these books have told them that I'm evil. And they're so stupid cunts that they just believe it. Oh, it's like the propaganda of Nazi Germany. You know, it's like, just keep telling them the same old shit, and in the end, they'll believe it is absolute truth. And that's what the idiots do. And um, somebody informed me the other day that um, the, the first of the laws of Satanism with Anton LaVey was um, that stupidity is actually evil. Stupidity is like the first commandment. Stupidity is evil. And it is, isn't it? Just look at it. 
the, the, the whole Anton LaVey Satanism thing made a whole lot of sense, vast more, vastly more sense than the, the Old Testament did. And so, you know, if you look into that, then you go, well, this is, I don't have an issue. I don't have an issue with that Satanism thing. I really don't. I have an issue with Yahweh. That's what I have an issue with. And I don't have an issue with Satan. Uh, it's all asked about face. Uh, it's all a massive deception. And so we've got to look for the root of where this deception is coming from. And obviously it's coming from uh, the overlords of the world. But who are they? Are they uh, Satanists? Or are they Yahwehists? I would think they're Yahwehists. I would think that's who they are worshipping. Because it's as plain as day. He was the evil one. In the Old Testament, Satan never did any evil. Never a single act of evil. Christians, try and find an act of evil that Satan did in the Old Testament, please. You can't find one. But those books are absolutely riddled with what Yahweh was doing. You know, there's instances whereby people weren't adhering to the proper protocol of the tabernacle. And so, uh, God uh, sent down f fire and brimstone uh, from a cloud and killed, you know, thousands of the Israelites that um, weren't paying attention to the great detail of what you're supposed to do when you set up the tabernacle. It's written there, everything has to be very, very pedantically, precisely in place. And if you don't do it, I will kill you, you motherfuckers. And there's lots of accounts of him supposed to be doing that. I could go on and on and on. Wow, wow, wow. And the whole fucking world, a good portion of it, is under the yoke of this bullshit. I don't know what ideas the globalists have in relation to a, a one world religion. But if they get rid of Yahweh, and then they get rid of the fiction of the evil of Satan, and we start again with some fucking thing else. I can't help but thinking that's the right step in the right direction. To get rid of all these dead desert dogma religions would be the vastest leap forward humanity has ever taken. To absolutely, completely eradicate all of that stuff. And let's look at it again. Let's start from a different premise and let's look deep within ourselves for the human traits and then if we want to blame somebody else well let's start investigating the nature of spirituality then let's start seriously looking how this works and see what veracity there is in it and if we can't conclude that there's any veracity in it because we can't find it then we have to conclude that it's all within our imagination the same as everything else is. Quantum physicists have been telling us for 120 years everything is within our imagination. It's all consciousness. So for those of you that know uh, Thomas Campbell, uh, the NASA physicist, uh, listen to uh, what he's got to say about um, um, his big toe, his theory of everything. Um, and he'll speak to you about this. He's a creation of consciousness. Um, it, it's um, a simulation. Um, you know, the simulation uh, is being projected from somewhere because we don't know what consciousness is. We feel as if we have it individually. But um, the whole thing, uh, according to him and many others, is a conscious thing. And um, it's like a character in the, the Sims cartoon uh, computer game thing. If a character thinks it's a real entity, then that's exactly the same as what we do. But when we look at the Sims, we can see that that character is just pixels. And it's just a program uh, from the, uh, the main power source, which is electricity, isn't it? It's not even the programs. The computer can't operate without electricity. So... Um, you could say that the program is our body 
and the spirit is the electricity because we do not get uh, conscious until the electricity is turned on until Holy Spirit enters our body uh, and Holy Spirit isn't in the vast majority of people there's only a few of us that, that, that have it proportionally and um, so we can see then that the simulation uh, fits very nicely into whatever we can say about consciousness you see Tom Campbell he uses um, analogies and similes and illustrations um, of you know our individuated state of consciousness being a shard of the main body of consciousness he uses simulations like um, um, you know simulations that we can see uh, like the sims and things like that and I use um, these varying analogies where I say well look just look at in your dreams what happens you think you're real you think everything around you is real but when you wake up it's just a fucking dream and so you know it's absolutely crystal clear to me that this is just a fucking dream and um, I've got you know myriad of reasons to substantiate that oh goodness me uh, so it's 11.30 and um, you know, I've sat here now for three hours uh, just chilling out and this is the second video I've made and um, I'll go about the rest of my day uh, play a bit of music on my guitar go to the gym, maybe go uh, for my eight mile cycle, drink my bottle of Newcastle Brown and eat my evening meal. What are you doing today? Are you working for the man? Are you working for the archons? Are they draining you of your vital life force and giving you paper in exchange? Way to go.